Hi, I'm Desi Serna, author of Fretboard Theory, Guitar Theory for Dummies, and Guitar Rhythm and Techniques for Dummies. In this free guitar lesson, I'm going to show you how to play the opening riff to the song Green River by Creedence Clearwater Revival. This is a great example of using pentatonic scale patterns on guitar. It's also a great example of using some finger picking if you choose to play it uh, that way. You can follow along with Free Guitar tab. Just go to the link in the video description. For this lesson, I'm playing a Paul Reed Smith DGT. I'm using the uh, bridge pickup, and I've got it tapped. It's in single coil mode, and I'm just going through a visual sound compressor and into a Fender uh, Pro Junior amplifier. <coughs> okay, to begin with, I'm going to sh show you how to play this with a pick, and I'm going to leave the bass notes out, and then we're going to talk about how you could add in the bass notes and put together uh, this little kind of uh, blues finger style um, arrangement. So, uh, looking at the uh, guitar tablature, notice that you rest on beat one, and then the uh, riff starts on beat two like this. So it's one, two, three, four, one. I'm also I'm using a pick right now. I'll use my fingers later, but let's start with a pick first. Uh, I think it's a little easier. So you're using E minor pentatonic uh, here, parts of what I call pattern one or pattern two. You might know them by another number depending on in what order you learn the patterns. Here's E minor pentatonic pattern one. And then here's pattern two. That's how I teach them uh, in my uh, uh, guitar theory instruction. And what you're going to do is you're going to play the third fret of the second string and the fourth fret of the third string. And you're going to slide into these. So you're actually going to start somewhere, a fret or two or whatever, uh, behind them. And you're going to pick them and immediately slide up into them like this. Whoops. That's better. So that's a slide. And after you slide, you pick these notes an additional uh, three times, like this. That's the first measure, and then there's a rest. And then uh, you do it again. And on that last, uh, the last time you pick these, you're going to slide down to the second fret, and then you're going to play the third string open. So this is starting in measure two now. It's... I do that again. From the beginning. Or sometimes I, I, I pick as I go down on that, on that slide. OK, uh, <clears throat> from here, there's, uh, this is the last eighth note in measure two. You open third string, excuse me, open fourth string D, and then you're going to hammer in to the second fret of that, and that's the first beat of the next measure. So you play the third string open, hammer in, then pick that note, then play the fifth string open, hammer into the second fret on the fifth string. Let me back up. Then you have the fourth string open again. Let me back up. And that starts, begins on the last eighth note of the second measure. So it's one, two, three, four. Do it again. One, two, three, four. And uh, the last eighth note of the third measure, you play second fret of the fourth string again. And actually, let me just play ahead a little bit, and you'll hear it. I'm gonna I'm gonna start uh, at the end of the second measure, and I'll play through. So one, two, three, four. So it it kind of uh, repeats it, when you start at the end of the. Uh, third measure you've got uh, 
on. So let me go back. This is the end of the second measure. Whoops, let's try that again. All right, that's the end of the phrase. And then from here, it just repeats. So that's one way you can play it. What we're missing is that there are some bass notes in there, some quarter note bass notes that are played along with the whole thing. In order to uh, play those bass notes and the part that I just showed you, uh, what you can do is you can play the part that I just showed you with your finger or maybe two fingers, and then you play those bass notes with your thumb. So the first step uh, would probably be see if you can play what you've learned so far just with your fingers, like this. I was picking that all with my index finger. You might use two fingers. You might do something like. Whatever feels uh, most comfortable for you. After you get it worked out, picking with your fingers, the next step is to add in quarter notes on the low six string E with your thumb, like this. And I think it helps to palm mute that a little bit. So I'm actually rolling my palm on here. So instead of, I'm getting. You could even try this with a thumb pick on, that might put your thumb in a better position to pick and palm mute, uh, you know, your call. You can try that. So here now is the, the riff played with my fingers combined with these bass notes played with my thumb. Looks like this. doesn't have to be perfect. If you listen to the original recording, you can hear that it's not perfect as well. It's got kind of an old, uh, almost Delta blues, kind of folk finger style uh, feeling to it. And uh, that style of music uh, is usually a little raw, and that, sounds, and that sounds pretty good. So let me give you some pointers, though, on combining these <coughs> parts. If you've never done this sort of thing, this, this could be really challenging for you. And what you'll need to do is look at the uh, look at the tablature, which I have right in front of me here, and half. So in measure, uh, what is it? In measure number five, that's when the riff repeats, and that's when I wrote in the bass notes. You actually hear the bass notes at the very beginning in the song, but I wanted to show you first without them because it's easier to learn that way. Beginning in measure five, you see the bass notes. So what you want to do is, they're quarter notes. They're they're right on the beat. So you always know where those bass notes are going to be. And you want to look at the tab, and you want to see how the bass notes line up with uh, vertically with the notes in the riff. So you want to see when do the notes land on the thumb. When, do your f when does your finger and your thumb play together? Or when might your fingers and thumb play opposite one another? Something like... And you just have to go through, and you just have to carefully put together each measure. So for example, that, that first measure is. So if you're looking at it uh, with me, notice that you have the thumb by itself. Then you have the thumb and the fingers to get finger or fingers together. Then you have just your fingers playing a group of notes. Then you have your thumb and your fingers together. Then just your fingers than just your thumb. So it's, in fact, it might be easier to leave some of those slides out for now and just do something like this. And I'm, I'm repeating that measure, so. So 
So you get the thumb by itself, and then you've got eighth notes with your fingers. So that means that your your finger's going to play on the thumb and opposite the thumb, on the thumb, opposite the thumb, and then you end with the thumb. Whoops, I got a little sloppy there. You really need to have patience in order to uh, develop this sort of uh, finger style technique here where you got, uh, where it's kind of like you have two parts going on at once. So that's the uh, first measure, measure five. That's the, f that's the first measure in the riff if you're playing finger style. I left the slide out. When you're ready, you can put that slide back in there. So the next part, if I slow it down, looks like this. I'm going to leave this slide out here. I left both slides out because usually you would slide down to the second fret there. But without the slides, it's... Let me do that again. I'm also leaving the last note in the measure out. With the slides. Here it is again. Then actually you play in the upbeat after beat four, you play the open fourth string. We're getting into the next measure now. We're in this part of the riff. And you can keep the bass notes going there as well. So I'm going to have a little pickup note. This is the uh, open D string at the end of measure six, and then I'll go into measure seven. So you've got. Whoops. Again, starting at the end of measure six. So you want to pay attention to when does a note land on the thumb and when does it land off the thumb. This measure is a little tricky because you're playing a note together with the thumb, but you're not picking it. It's a hammer-on. So that takes that's a different type of coordination needed here. So let me slow that down again. So it's... And here's another one. And then going into the last measure, and by the way, you know, you can pause this video and you might spend 30 minutes on that one measure if you need to. That's fine. Uh, last measure then is, again, that's, There's even more going on than this. Um, I'm doing. So I've got some muting going on, not only with my right hand here, but with my left hand too. I'm trying to control some of the noise of those open strings so they're not ringing out when I don't want them. And I, I do that by flattening my fingers out here in my left hand and just laying them across the string. So this is a pretty. Is, this could be a simple part, but depending on how you play it and how you look at it, it's kind of complicated with all the little, little tiny little movements involved. So. Let me pick up at the end of measure six, and I'll play the last two measures in the riff. So it's. Again. What usually happens for most players is as you practice this and you start to put the parts together, that over time you just uh, pick up on the feel of keeping those bass notes going and you kind of stop thinking about the bass notes and you're able to just kind of play the riff over top of it, much like you might tap your foot and tap quarter notes with your foot and then play, you know, a part over it that is some variation of eighth notes or something without really thinking about the foot tap. You kind of naturally put it together. The same thing can happen between your fingers and your thumb. It just takes a little uh, more extra time 
to develop. So here's the whole riff again <coughs> with the thumb and slow down a little bit. So. That's how I play it and teach it. You'll notice that there uh, are some different variations on the actual recording, but that gets you in the ballpark. That teaches you how to play a riff using uh, uh, the popular pentatonic guitar scales. And you also learn a little bit about uh, fingerstyle technique as well. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this free guitar lesson. If you would like to learn more about music theory for guitar, including guitar scales, chords, progressions, modes, and more, and including the pentatonic scale patterns that I have been referring to in this lesson, then go to my website at guitar-music-theory.com. That's guitar music theory with dashes in between the words. When you get there, join my mailing list and sign up to take a free tour of my member area where you can actually preview several videos that are part of my fretboard theory series. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure to click like on this video and leave me some positive comments.